it's October already on those Good morning, church. Good morning. Right, get to your feet as we listen to the music here on this first hymn. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Sunday you've given us. Thank you for this day that we can come and worship you and praise you and give you glory for who you are. Dear Father, we come here with many things in our hearts and minds, things that have followed us through the last week, and we stop here for a moment at the beginning of 
one week and at the end of another stop here to praise you and to give you glory and prepare our hearts for what's ahead. Be with us today, dear Lord, as we have gathered here in your house, as we lift the name of Jesus high. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus that we pray and all of God's children said. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is Blessed Assurance.
Lord, we have Jessica to you today. We pray for healing. Pray that as she wraps this shawl around her dear Lord, as she covers herself up with it, that she knows that the Lord is covering her. And if you're right there with her, dear Lord, bring healing to her body. Heal her from this fight. Thank you, dear Father, and we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll make things right in these people's lives. In the wonderful name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, right before the service got started, uh, Susan got a request there. That's what she was responding to. Uh, Landon Schwartz uh, was in an accident last night. Didn't get any other details uh, on that beyond that he was in an accident. So remember the sports family um, in prayer this morning and the landing in prayer. Is there anybody you want to make mention of this morning? Jeremy, what about Ernie Smith? He, Ernie he Smith? Had, yeah, did you ever hear I haven't heard any updates on Ernie at all. Has anybody else heard anything about Ernie? Anybody? I have him on the prayer line and uh, I've called several times and I can't make connections. Anybody else this morning? Yeah, Don and Pat Kessler. Yes. A lot of prayer. Remember Pat in prayer there. If you have prayer requests now, uh, get those over to Harriet. Uh, Harriet's going to lead the uh, prayer chain now. So I remember Pat in prayer. She's got a lot on her plate and some decisions to make. So, Linda? Again, you know, to pray for our country, the upcoming election, that God will take care of America. Thank you. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Bow your heads where you're at today. Lift our hearts to the Lord on this beautiful September morning. Dear Father, we thank you. Thank you for listening to us. You hear what's going on in our hearts and in our minds. You hear what's going on in our souls, in our spirits. Your spirit intercedes for us with groans too deep for us to understand. We thank you. Thank you for being there beside of us and understanding what we go through as human beings on this earth. Lord, be with us. Be with the Lymans today. Be with Ernie Smith today, dear Lord. Father, we lift our country to you. It's been quite a year. We lift everyone up here in the midst of this virus that we're dealing with and the mayhem that it has caused and the changes that it has brought. You know that us human beings tend not to handle change very well. Pray for our country, your Lord, that you'll make our hearts able to hear your voice. Make our hearts receptive to your leading and your guiding. Lift our leaders in this country to you, that their hearts will be receptive to what you have to say. Our president governors, our senators and representatives from a local level all the way to the federal. Dear Lord, we pray that you'll move through this country and that people will listen to what it is that you have to say. Come together as your people today. We want to know what it is that you have to say. We want to follow you and walk with you. We remember 
were your first disciples, how they came to you and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. So we come together this morning remembering these words that were taught to us to pray. We join our voices together this morning as we remember our Lord's prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. service out on Facebook this morning. God loves you. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Susan, do you have anything you want to play for us here for special music? coming at you with some reassuring love stuff. I kind of moved uh, into the issue of love last week and I want to give you some more reassuring stuff. Everything can't be hellfire and brimstone all the time. Some of you wouldn't care if I preached that way all the time, would you? Brought it to them, you know. Tell them, we'll tell them, preacher. But everything can't be like that all the time. Focus on the issue of God's love for us and that we are God's people and uh, that we walk with Him and talk with Him. Um, the title of the message today is uh, Accident Waiting to Happen. Is that a, something you would use to describe yourself? Are you, a, are you an accident waiting to happen at all? Uh, several years ago when I was uh, blogging heavily out there throwing my ideas into my blog over on Google, and I would get out there and share the link to my blog every week and the entry that I made that week. And I was over on Twitter a lot, uh, talking with people and sharing um, my blog entries with people over on Twitter. And I ran into a lady out of Alabama. Um, she uh, used uh, her 140 characters. You know, over on Twitter, you get 140 or 160 characters use to say something and you get the same thing on your own page to describe yourself you get 140 characters you have to think about what it is you want to say you also have to be up to date with all the lingo and the abbreviations on things because people use that too you only get 140 characters that's it and so this lady out of Alabama decided to use uh, this description for herself uh, she put here an ordinary radical it's also an accident waiting to happen. I mean that in the best way, of course. How do you mean that in the best way? How do you, how do you <laughs> I'm an accident waiting to happen. Mean that in the best way, you know. How do you, how do you mean that in the best way? The, fir the first phrase has so many negative connotations with it that you follow up with mean that, mean that in the best way, of course. 
Many, many of us probably feel like that in our lives, and not in a good way. If you're prone to accidents, hurting yourself, cutting yourself, running into things, dropping things, and whatnot, you might feel like that phrase is all about you. As soon as I read her self-description, I went into Christian terminology mode and wondered how I could use that line for one of my messages. Accident waiting to happen. Mean that in the best way. The Apostle Paul used the term jars of clay to describe our frailness in 2 Corinthians 4. My wife and I usually read the scriptures with each other before we go to bed every night. And that year, we just happened to be in the book of First and Second Corinthians. Uh, so we were in Second Corinthians 4 uh, that night. And Paul had this to say, verses 7 to 12. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our bodies the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. What happens if you drop a jar of clay? We're in that region, we're not far from Kirksville, it's the pottery capital of the world. Some of you might be into pottery and stuff like that. What happens if you drop a jar of clay? Obviously, it breaks, it smashes, and it's done. Sounds like an accident waiting to happen. Paul just knew how to take an illustration like this and turn it into something awesome for the Lord. Many of us probably feel inside like the connotations that go with such a description. We feel inadequate. We feel downtrodden. We feel frail, weak, and wimpy. And Paul goes straight to it and says, that's what we are. As Paul enters into what we know as the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians, he begins to talk about all the work that they had been doing in the midst of the Corinthians. How hard it was, the struggles they endured. He talks about the devil, the God of this world, who has worked to blind the world from the truth. A simple jar of clay has a lot to endure, running the risk of being broken or smashed, an accident waiting to happen. But it was the waiting to happen part in that Twitter description that intrigued me the most. What are we waiting for? And what is going to happen? First thing that came to mind as I looked at that phrase was the idea of going somewhere or making something happen, or even becoming somebody. I thought of that old Travis Tritt song, I'm going to be somebody someday. I'm going to be somebody someday. You can bet your hard-earned dollar I will. I've heard that on the radio several times. From a purely human standpoint, no one wants to be overlooked, thought less of, or made out to be nothing. Many of us maybe grew up in rough home lives and had a parent or a grandparent who wasn't very encouraging. Maybe they looked down upon you and maybe you went through physical or verbal abuse. Things like that had to be going through Paul's mind as he wrote words like this to the Corinthians. And there's some good Old Testament stuff that ties in here as well. Jeremiah chapter 18, at the potter's house, 
This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. The pot that was in his hands was marred. It was messed up. It was useless. But somehow the potter reshaped it and made it into something that he could use. It was an accident waiting to happen in the best way. And isn't that what God does with us? Jeremiah still speaking here in verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord? Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. And that drove me to Webster's to look up the word accident. What do Webster's have to say about this word accident? An unforeseen and unplanned event or circumstance. Lack of intention or necessity chains. An unfortunate event resulting especially from carelessness or ignorance. An unexpected and medically important bodily event, especially when injurious. A cerebrovascular accident. An unexpected happening causing loss or injury which is not due to any fault or misconduct on the part of the person injured. An accident. Used euphemistically to refer to an involuntary act or instance, a non-essential property or quality of an entity or circumstance. It's nice to think that God doesn't think of us as an accident. Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 5, at the beginning of the whole book, he speaks to the prophet. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Maybe he hasn't called you to be a prophet. He certainly has something in mind for all of us. If you don't have some specific calling on your life, feel the freedom to find whatever it is you want to do. And do it for Jesus. Go pump gas in Idaho and do it for Jesus. Deliver ice cream to Walgreens stores and do it for Jesus. You are not an accident. You might feel like you are at times. You might feel inferior or insignificant. God has brought you into this world for his purposes. And the sky is the limit. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Second Corinthians 4.13. Paul says that the Corinthians and himself share the same faith. That one day Jesus will return. That everything they are going through here on this earth is preparation for what is ahead. You ever think about that? All the rough stuff that you're going through here in this life is preparation. We're going to be judged someday on how we've handled ourselves here in this world. All of this is preparation for what is ahead. And those Travis Tripp words ring true. I'm going to be somebody someday. Someday, and it's waiting to happen, Jesus will take us to where he is. Someday, while we wait, God is going to do something in and with our lives. It might be the simplest thing. An opportunity to tell someone about Jesus while talking in the grocery store. Maybe he'll 
take you across the ocean as a missionary. You'll see yourself overcome a spiritual or emotional obstacle in becoming the person that you're supposed to be. God drew up a blueprint long ago for each of us and said, when so-and-so comes into this world, I want them to be my child and serve me in this way. It's not in the purpose of what our vocation is that we find out who we are. It's in realizing that we are God's child and that we ultimately understand that we are not an accident. We are waiting to happen. Jesus said, I go and I prepare a place for you. And I'm going to come back and take you to where I am. Something we can count on. Something we can believe in. Stand as we hear the music to this last hymn. Amazing grace. Sunday is the first Sunday of October, October 4th. We're going to have one more uh, outdoor service. Uh, I think that'll probably be our last one. I'm guessing things will be cooling off in November and then December, absolutely. It'll be too cold out there to, to do some stuff. So this might be our last one. Uh, next Sunday evening, 6 p.m. I'm going to start a little bit earlier here because it's getting dark a little bit sooner outside. So. Uh, 6 p.m., come and join us. We're going to have communion outside, and I'll be your special music. Looking forward to singing for you, and uh, it's going to be a, a good evening. So uh, come on out for that. Uh, the following Sunday, October 11th, uh, we're going to meet at uh, Ralph and Linda's house for some like apple cider making and some fishing. Uh, if any of the church kids want to come along, if you're watching out there on Facebook and you're getting this announcement here, uh, you need to bring a life jacket with you if you're going to be on a paddle boat or go canoing. Uh, you need to bring a fishing pole. 
need to have some adult supervision. We'd like for the parents to stay with the kids, not just drop them off and leave. And uh, you got anything else you want to add? On that? Yes, Rob and I want to make sure, because we don't see any here today. This event is for children. You with grandkids, whatever, bring them. They're more than welcome. They don't attend this church or, or Pastor Jeremy's church. We want them to learn the Word of God, have a good day and fun, okay? So the children, all your children are welcome, okay? Thank you, Pastor Jeremy. Very good. Very good. Very good. This, uh, this coming week, we get started on Secret Friends. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to get in on it, it's really your last chance. Uh, you can get that questionnaire filled out, get it to Linda. We still about 25. Yes. There, no, no more than that. So, uh, we're going to do a little thing between our two churches, Thornville and Hopewell, and uh, do a little secret friends thing. So, uh, if you want to get in on that, it's last chance uh, to do that. So, any other announcements? Anything we missed? Uh, Pastor Jeremy, I just got another text from Christy Ironman about Landon Sports. And it said that he rolled a semi, but God was with him and he's okay. Landing in prayer, we hope uh, everything is good. All righty, as Susan plays, I'll uh, I'll let you go row by row. Thank you for coming out this morning. God bless you. Have a beautiful Sunday. Yeah. 